Welcome back to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by two-time national champion with the Clarkson Golden Knights and two thousand in the 2019 Patty Kazmaier Award winner, Lauren Gable. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Lauren, and how's everything going? It's going well. Obviously, this year has been a little different because of COVID, but other than that, we're still be uh, we're still able to get on the ice, which is really nice and. Um, obviously in the gym a lot and, you know, taking advantage of what we can get. And we're obviously very fortunate enough to be able to have that um, ability to go on the ice. Yeah, you are recently participating in the Can- Canadian national team training camp. Uh, talk about that experience and what was that like being a part of that training camp? Honestly, any training camp we go to is a complete honor to be a part of. Um, That training camp obviously looked a little different with COVID and everything. Uh, We only got to leave our rooms to go to the rink. Uh, We got room service. Obviously, we're tested a lot for COVID. Um, It was was a bit lonely, but you kind of got used to it as the days went on. And we had a lot of Zoom calls, so we got to see everyone on that. But on anything else it was it was just like really different but um obviously very fortunate enough to be able to play games and obviously to fly to calgary definitely and being in that bubble environment for that camp was there any challenges you faced uh, doing so because i was talking to sarah potomac and she was explaining to me some of those challenges that she had to face when she was in the bubble there were like a lot of challenges to face i mean when we first got there, we were quarantined for uh, 48 hours, so we couldn't leave. And um, when we first got back on the ice, we were only allowed three people. So it was really different, and the atmosphere was different. But as soon as we could get on the ice, it was like a whole different ball game as a team. Um, also, another challenge that we obviously faced was that we hadn't played games in like 11 months. So it was a really long time to be waiting and very impatient and I think getting back on the ice with everyone was really amazing and um, being able to like I said play games and stuff was was truly great but that was definitely one of the biggest challenges for me and I think as like a whole group of people as well Um, I know for me when I stepped on the ice in the first game I was like very confused because I hadn't played in a long time and obviously you don't want to mess up or anything but um, yeah it was a really great experience. Yeah, and how did you try to dust off some of that rust not playing in 11 months? Was that an adjustment or was it after a few after a few practices you got used to it pretty quickly? After a few practices, you got used to it. It was more of the game after like the first quarter that we played, you know, you got more into it and more used to being back in game shape. I think from there on out after the first game, everyone kind of just got all the jitters out and ever since that first game, the, the hockey went really well. Yeah, and following you guys on social media, you guys were posting a lot about the scrimmages that were played during that training camp. Was it weird having no fans in those scrimmages, and was that an adjustment for yourself? It was very weird, but honestly, it wasn't a big adjustment for me. Um, When I am playing in front of people, I don't really notice them. Um, Obviously, at intermissions or whistles, you hear them cheering, but while I'm playing, like, I don't notice them at all, so... Um, it wasn't really a big adjustment for me, but it's always nice to have, uh, to be able to have people there. So, um, yeah, just like cheering you on and stuff. But other than that, I didn't really notice anything. Now it's one year away until the 2022 winter Olympic games. Do you have any idea what that's going to be like and what the process is for being on that team? Because right now there's, there's so many questions for this year's Olympics for the summer games and what's going on with the summer games. Is that going to translate to what's going to happen for the winter Olympics next season? Honestly, at this point, I don't really know. Um, We don't even know if Worlds is a go yet. Um, So I think just right now, you just got to take it day by day and see how and where it goes. Um, Other than that, um, obviously, patience is key. So you just got to wait it out and continue to work hard on and off the ice and, and see where it goes after that. Yeah, hopefully it happens. I'll be really excited once the Olympics start, especially since we haven't had one in quite some time. And are you going to be watching the summer games and seeing what happens during those Olympics? And do you think some of that will translate for the Winter Olympic Games uh, next year? Yeah, I'll definitely be watching the Olympics. I'm cheering on Canada. Um, Obviously, I've 
cheered them on every every Olympics. Doesn't matter if it's summer or winter. I've always been watching them, and it's truly amazing what athletes can accomplish at them and the 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 pride and honor that they feel representing their country, especially at the Olympic Games. Um, I think obviously the Summer Olympics will translate to what the Winter Olympics would be like, um, just with how everything's going to plan out, um, just with, I don't know, COVID testing, um, if they get like the COVID-19 shot, like we don't know. Um, but like I said, honestly, just take it day by day and see what happens. Definitely. Now, besides that training camp, what have you been up to uh, besides hockey? Anything interesting in the past year? Besides hockey? Um, Honestly, not too much. I took up piano again, um, just learning on my own. Um, and then I've started to sing a lot more. <laughs> um, but other than that, just hanging out and working on my skills. And yeah. Yeah. What's it like uh, playing the piano? And I've noticed you sang some Justin Bieber tunes. What's that been like? Because it's pretty good, not going to lie. <laughs> um, playing the piano, it's it's pretty difficult. But um you know, obviously takes time and practice makes perfect. And uh, singing Justin Bieber songs, honestly, he's an amazing artist and um, obviously has turned out to be an amazing person as well. And um, obviously has been a fan of him since he was young and, uh, you know, singing to his songs is, is just something that I wanted to do to get out of my comfort zone. And eventually I'll get to sing different artists, but um, for right now it's just Justin Bieber and seeing where that goes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what's your favorite JB song to sing? probably anyone right now um that song is is really it's actually difficult to sing um i think it was it was a lot different than my first cover that i did of lonely but um yeah no his, his songs are very difficult but that's what makes him a great artist too so yeah i also like how he's evolved as an artist becoming less of a pop singer more of kind of like a ballad um singer which i've really appreciated from him yeah his his music is is more um deep down of what he's truly feeling and the stuff that he's gone through to get to where he is, which is honestly so meaningful to him and to show like other people, like what he had to go through to get to where he is. And obviously he's encountered hardships and everything like that, but um, it's same as athletes, like you encounter hardships and um, you can tell your story of how you got to where you are, but he obviously does it in a different way. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I love learning about what the meaning is behind lyrics for all different types of songs and artists. And I feel like people don't really understand the meaning of lonely because it really goes deep down of what he went through as a child, uh, not really having a childhood and going through all the stuff he went through. And it really opened my eyes of what fame is like, especially having fame at such a young age. Yeah, I honestly couldn't even imagine um, being him at age 14. Um you know, going from nothing to having so much in your life is a huge adjustment. And to think that he had so many fans and people watching him and um, obviously you don't want to, um, you know, do something wrong to turn them away. But I think now he he's really um, telling them what he had encountered in his songs. And I think that's a wide eye opener for a lot of people because um a lot of people don't know what he had been through and what he still goes through. And, um, you know, that's obviously in the past and it's nice that he's expressing how he feels and how he felt right now. Yeah, definitely. And especially since sometimes having everything means sometimes you have nothing. And especially at a young age when you have a lot of people who are kind of fake and just want to be your friend because of your popularity, not because of the person you are. I think that's definitely something hard to deal with, especially as a teenager, because you're still developing mentally and physically. So I couldn't imagine going through something like that. I think that would be very difficult. And that's why I have a lot of respect for him, especially how he's handled it now. Yeah, for sure. Um... I, like I said, I couldn't even imagine being his age and dealing with what he dealt with. And, um, you know, he's posted things about um, asking Google to take off of some of the pictures they have of him and haven't accepted that request yet. And um, it just goes to show you like who he wants to be and, and to trust the process in, in everything you do. And obviously believe in yourself and believe in your abilities to achieve those amazing dreams and goals that you have. And, um, obviously work on yourself and be the best version of yourself that you can be. Definitely. Now back to your career and your life as uh, besides Justin Bieber, uh, you're from <laughs> Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, talk about growing up there. What's it like and how did you start playing hockey? 
Uh, yes, I am from Kitchener, Ontario. I started playing hockey when I was four years old. It's actually a um, very interesting story. Um, I actually went to fundamentals with my dad and I said I wanted to get off the ice. I didn't like it. I, I actually very, very much hated it. Um, then the week passed and he asked me if I wanted to go out again. And I said no. And then he asked me again right before he left. And I said, OK, fine, I'll come out. And ever since then, I enjoyed the game and obviously fell in love with it. And it's something that, you know, I look back on and so amazing with everything that I've accomplished individually and as a team, as a whole. And it's truly amazing. Yeah. Did you have a favorite player growing up and what part of their game did you try to emulate to your game? I would say growing up on the women's side, I would say Megan Augusta. Um, she has such amazing vision, skill and speed and is obviously a great person both on and off the ice. And for the men's side, I would say Sidney Crosby. Um, obviously, he's an amazing player as well. And, you know, the things he does on the ice, I just it boggles my mind. I just am like, wow, like, how do you do that? But obviously, he works on his skills every single day, which makes him the best player that he can be. Yeah, was it crazy when he tried to attempt the Michigan a few weeks ago, I think, and he almost pulled it off, but just came, came a bit close. Yeah, <laughs> it was a close call, but um, obviously you need to try those things and, and practice makes perfect, like I had said before, but, um, you know, work on those little skills and everything like that to um, accomplish, obviously, big goals in games. Yeah, definitely. Sidney Crosby will always live in my mind because as an American, he scored that goal. That was one of the toughest goals to see. I know you feel much differently about it, but I have a lot of respect for him as a player. And for Megan Augusta, I was doing research on yourself and I was just looking through some of the points leaders for NCA. She had 300 points in her college hockey career. That's just insane to think about. It is insane. Um, like I said, she's an amazing player and obviously has that goal scoring mentality as well, but also a um, pass first mentality too um I think that's really important to have in in a in a hockey player or any type of athlete obviously you want a goal scorer but someone else that can um give the puck to other people and let them score too so I think that's a really important part of her game and um yeah I'll, I'll always look up to her now before Clarkson you played in the PWHL for the KW Rangers uh, how'd you get the opportunity to play with that organization well, obviously from Kitchener. <laughs> so um, I played Waterloo Ravens. Um, I got called up to probably two or three games with the Kitchener a PWHL team. Um, it was a, a jump for me, obviously. It's a lot faster, faster paced, um, uh, stronger, you know, everything like that. But um, I think Kitchener definitely developed me as a player and both on and off the ice. But um, I left there to go play in Toronto for the Arrows my next season. Obviously, they developed me really well as an athlete. Um, and then my final year, I played in Oakville, and that was for Brady Cochran. And she's such an amazing coach and um, someone I looked up to while she was coaching me. And um, we're still in contact sometimes, which is nice. But I think the Oakville organization was – was a right decision for me uh, for my grade 12 year. Um, they really focused on developing their athletes, especially the ones in grade 11 and 12, which um, I really, really liked. Yeah, with Oakville, you had a great roster that you played with. One of those players was Emma Malte, who's obviously doing very well with Ohio State. Uh, what's it like playing with that competition every day, and how does that help your hockey development? Yeah, it's, it's always nice to play against um, hard teams and hard players because that in turn makes you a better player. Um, it's good competition and it's really competitive when it comes down to a puck race or uh, in the corner while you're battling someone. Um, but I think like all in all, like I said, it just makes you a better person um, and better player on the ice as well. Yeah, and when you went on to play with those two organizations, with the Toronto Arrows and the Oakville Hornets, did you learn anything from those experiences that were different and similar? Like, did you learn something from with the Arrows that was different from what you learned from the Oakville Hornets? And did you take anything from those experiences that have helped you today for your hockey development and for being with Team Canada now? Um, honestly, there wasn't too much different. Um, being in my grade 12 year with Oakville, they obviously focused a lot on um, development. Um, but honestly, like I didn't really take too much from those, um, those two teams, but 
one thing that um, I definitely did take from Oakville was probably to be confident and to be consistent in your play. That had been something that I'd been working on for a while and um, something that when I got to Clarkson, I was still working on. But I think as I went through my four years at Clarkson, um, obviously dialed in a lot in practice and performed at my best in practice, which translates to a game, which obviously is very important. Definitely. And how did playing in the PWHL help prepare you for college hockey? Just playing against um, amazing players in general. Um, you know, five out of my um, whole class, that's including me, um, they all played in the PWHL. So I literally played against all of them, um, which is kind of cool to think about. And obviously all amazing players and the competitive edge that we all bring um, to like all of our practices and games was, was great. And PWHL, um, it was fast paced, competitive. But when I got to college, I was like, wow, this is even faster and, and more competitive and you had to be a lot stronger and stuff. But yeah, it was definitely an amazing experience. Yeah. And talk about your recruiting process and why did you choose to go to Clarkson? Cause obviously fantastic players have went there before you did like Renata fast. Yeah. Um, I actually committed in my grade 11 year beginning. Um, I think it was actually in October, but I was on um, tours like throughout uh, the summer that year. And I stopped my, I think my Clarkson was my last stop. And I literally got to campus and I was like, wow, like this is where I want to go. Even before I met the coaches, before I met the team and they were just so welcoming and it was a small campus, which is what I was looking for. And it was only five hours away from home. So anyone could have come and seen me like every single game that we had. Um, my parents came uh, for home games and it was just like homey. Like it felt like I was at home, obviously only being five hours away, but also two hours from the Ottawa and Montreal. So it literally felt like I was still in Canada, even though I was in America. Definitely. And you're talking about the difference between junior hockey and college hockey. What was the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it the mental side of the game or was it kind of the speed of the game, making quicker decisions and going against players that are four or five years older than you are? I think it was more mental, um, knowing that I'm playing against players who are older than me, knowing that I can accomplish what I can being the player that I, I was. Um, that also comes with confidence and, and having the ability to um, be confident in yourself to make those those plays or to um, not be afraid to mess up even though you, even though you get the puck back. Um, so like things like that, like I feel um, were were challenging to me, but I also learned a lot my freshman year. Yeah, in your first year with Clarkson, you lost to Quinnipiac in the ECAC finals. Uh, what did you take away from your first uh, ECAC playoff experience? Um, and how did you use that loss to motivate you for the national tournament that year? It was obviously upsetting to lose that um, game. Um, but I think we learned a lot as a team. And to be able to go to the Frozen for my freshman year was honestly an experience I had never experienced before. And it was just amazing to be able to experience that with my, my teammates, especially my classmates and to look back on it and, and, and see that my class made it to four frozen fours um, in four consecutive years is, is truly an amazing accomplishment and something that I'll obviously never forget. Yeah, definitely. And you got revenge though against Quinnipiac the next round. Uh, did you learn anything from that finals game that you took uh, with you for that first round game you had against Quinnipiac? Um, I think one thing that we learned as a team was to um, move pucks quick and to play well in the D zone. Um, that is something obviously Quinnipiac is really, really good at um, is moving pucks quick and playing well in the O zone. So once we shut them down in, in the O zone, we, we obviously um, were really, really good at it and stopped them from scoring goals. And I believe that was a one nothing game. Um, I'm pretty certain Renata scored in 10 seconds. So we had the rest of the game to um, keep it at one nothing. So um, it was very stressful, but also fun to play in. And um, yeah. Yeah. And you lost to Boston College in your first Frozen Four experience. Uh, talk about playing in your first Frozen Four. What was that experience like for you, especially going against BC, who I think was undefeated that season, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, they were undefeated. Um, it was 
a whole other experience. Um, that one was in New Hampshire and it was very overwhelming, uh, you know, cause two more games and you could be a national champion at that point. And um, honestly, very grateful that we got to that point and um, made it to the frozen four. It was a whole different ball game. And obviously we hadn't played against BC. So um, they were obviously a very good team, hence their um, no, no losses. Um, but I think, you know, going, moving on from that experience, um, we learned to, to obviously never give up and don't take anything for granted. Yeah, in New Hampshire, they have a much larger ice sheet compared to most college hockey rinks. What did you was did you have to adjust to that, especially going against defensemen like Megan Keller, who are obviously used that to her advantage? Yeah, we we stepped on for the first practice, and we kind of just like all looked at each other, like, "Wow, this is very this is a lot of ice to cover," and we were we were a little worried at first, but um, as soon as we got that first shift over with, we were ready to go and. Um, obviously tried our best, but didn't have the outcome that we wanted. Now, in your sophomore and junior season, you won the national championship. Was there any point during those regular seasons you realized your team was capable of doing that? Honestly, my sophomore year, we lost to Wisconsin. I think it was both games at the beginning of the year. Um, And I went to my parents after the game and I was like, you know what? We're winning a national championship. I don't care if we lost them. We're doing it. And they kind of like doubted me in a way. And cause we had obviously lost to Wisconsin and I was like, no, like we got this. And um, as soon as that national championship final ga- game came, I was like, all right, we got this. And then obviously we, we won three, nothing. And it was an experience that obviously I'd never experienced, but, it was truly amazing to be able to to win and to play against Wisconsin, who's such an amazing team. They develop their players so well. Um, and then I move on to my junior year, 2018 National Championship, and it was amazing too. Um, obviously, to be able to play an ECAC team in the finals, which I don't think has ever happened before, um, says a lot about our league and um, says a lot about the programs that we have in it as well. So I think that was – that was that was great too. Um, but honestly, both national championships, being able to raise that trophy above our heads, was an unbelievable experience and something I'll never forget. Yeah, and you won you won, you won the ACC hockey tournament uh, during your sophomore year. Uh, what was it like to win that league championship before heading into the national t- tournament that year? It was a great feeling. Obviously, it sets you up for the NCAA tournament and where you're placed in that ranking. Um, but I think it kind of gave us momentum um, going into that tournament, knowing that we can accomplish a lot of things as long as we play as a team and work hard. Um, but I think obviously it, it gave us that um, drive and knowing that we can do anything we want if we put our minds to it and work hard. Yeah, and you had a tough road to that national championship game. I was looking at that tournament. You had to play Cornell, Minnesota, and then obviously Wisconsin in the national championship game. Uh, what challenges did Cornell and Minnesota bring when you faced them in the semifinals and the quarterfinals? And what did you do to stop those um, challenges that they brought? Because Minnesota obviously had a lot of weapons that year along with Cornell, and they still obviously are two power-ranked teams in college hockey today. Yeah, Cornell, um, they're just a hardworking team, and they they fight everywhere on the ice. They they get into those battles and, and want that puck. So, um when we got into that game, we knew what um, they could do, and we, we tried to stop them, obviously, and came out with the win. And then moving on to Minnesota, um, we did a lot of video on them and what we needed to do as a team to not allow them to get offensive um, chances. Um, you know, we took advantage of how their D zone was. Um, we found that they were um, very puck focused or leaving the zone early, which gave us a lot of more chances um, to have that chance to score um but other than that um yeah we just did a lot of video as a team and um knew, knowing what we could do to um beat them yeah definitely and being a part of those frozen fours throughout your college hockey career what's the atmosphere like in those buildings because i've been to one frozen four in boston back in 2015 it's a cool experience for me just seeing the atmosphere that the fans bring and also you guys have the pep bands the red carpet experience uh what's that like being a part of that uh, frozen four atmosphere it was really cool walking on that red carpet off the bus for the games. Um, 
it was like, I don't even know how to describe it, but just having our pet band there and being able to have our um, family and friends there and, and all of the people that support us back in Potsdam was truly amazing. And, um, you know, seeing them rally behind us, like we're literally a very small school, obviously located in Potsdam, New York, <laughs> not the biggest place to be in, but um, I, like I said, I think that says a lot about our program and how our coaches run it and the people that they bring in. Yeah, and what were what emotions were you feeling after winning your first national championship against Wisconsin? And talk about that game and what do you remember from it? I literally was speechless. Um, I remember when um, Merce scored the empty net goal and we all went back to the bench and we're like, we're natty champs, even though the game wasn't over yet, but it was three nothing at that point. And we're like, we got this, like all this stuff. And being on the ice until that buzzer went like it was truly amazing and um the heart was just racing so fast and um I think you know one of those takeaways I take away from that game is um to know that even though you are the underdog um you can do anything as long as you work hard to achieve that goal yeah and your teams have been super successful during your time in college uh what did Clarkson do to maintain that success throughout your time there and uh, was it hard trying to stay focused on some of the games you had to play, especially with all the outside noise you faced? Yeah, um, you know, just like being in that small town, we obviously had a lot of supporters and at our games had a lot of fans and pep band just, you know, rallied behind us. And I think bringing in um, uh, really well-rounded players um, is a huge benefit, obviously, to any team. But I think the thing with Clarkson is they didn't just bring in skilled players or um, diggers or grinders. They brought in a mixture of everyone so that everyone had their role and they all knew what their role was. And I think that's important, not only for Clarkson, but for any other team is for people to know what their role is, whether it's to um, be a first line player or a fourth line player. Um, I think that's what um, was great at Clarkson is that everyone accepted their role no matter what role they played and that was huge for us because that also helped us in the long run. Now during your junior year national championship run uh, you played Ohio State in the Frozen Four that year you beat them one to nothing talk about that game what do you remember from it because Ohio State at the time that was their first Frozen Four appearance and they had a lot of grit on that team because I remember a play uh, where one of the Ohio State, I think, forwards pushed one of your defensemen after trying to jam for a puck. I don't know if you remember that, but it was just a very gritty game, and then you obviously pulled it off in overtime, winning that one, one to nothing. Yeah, they were uh, a very hard team to play against. Um, they were kind of like a Cornell, where they're all over the ice. They they dig hard. They wanted it. And obviously the thing I remember is scoring that goal in overtime. Um it was an amazing feeling. I got an amazing pass from my line mate, Jig, and um, putting that puck in the back of the net, I was just like, wow, we did it. Like, we're going to the final again. Um, we're going for a nat another national championship. And um, that next game that we played against Colgate, I never in my life thought that I would be a national championship champion, let alone a back-to-back -back national champion. So, honestly, it was truly amazing and experience that will, will last a lifetime. Yeah, and talking about, I was going to ask you about that goal you scored against Ohio State. Is that the most memorable goal you've ever scored? Because you've scored a lot during your time with Clarkson. I, I'd probably say yes. That's probably the most memorable goal I, I have scored in my career. Now, you played three overtime games in that tournament. Um, what, um, uh, how did you stay mentally prepared uh, for those three overtime games? And especially when you're so physically drained, how do you try to stay that? How do you try to keep that mental energy throughout those overtimes? Because talking to Savannah Harmon, one of your teammates for that national championship game, she was telling me how, like, they basically had to play an extra game every night in that national tournament. Yeah, I think, um, you know, aside from obviously being tired and um, everything like that, I think, you know, you just got to dig down and remember, like, why you're here and what you want to accomplish. And I think that, you know, um, sets you up for success and obviously to no matter how tired you are to just keep grinding and pushing forward and obviously that helped us with a successful outcome. Now you won back-to-back -back national championships beating Colgate in the final what emotions were you feeling after that game and talk about that game especially playing an ECAC opponent in the national championship game. 
That game was super stressful. Um, obviously, it was back to back. We scored, they scored, we scored, they scored. And going into overtime, I was like, literally, someone needs to end this like right now. Um, obviously, Clarkson. But um, I think like for me in that moment, I was just like, we're so close to being uh, national champions again that, um, you know, we did everything in our power to accomplish that. And like Ryan McGill, she blocked the shot and Jig went down and scored. So I think, you know, being um, those type of players that can get in, in shot lanes and, um, you know, block pucks and stuff like that, that obviously led to a goal. So I think grinding it out and obviously, like I said, no matter how tired you are, you um, find that extra level and, and push through it. Definitely. And what, what were you feeling after Elizabeth Shagira got that overtime goal, especially since it was a breakaway? It was one of the strangest overtime championship winning goals I've ever seen, but it was really cool. Yeah, it, it was strange, but it was it was honestly um, so amazing um, to experience that, that feeling again. Honestly, I don't even think I can describe what I was feeling at that time. Um, it was so surreal and um, just an amazing experience as a whole. And to experience that as a team is is something I'll never forget and will always remember. And um, the emotions were really high, um, knowing that we won a championship and our senior class was leaving and um, all of that stuff. But um, yeah, it was truly amazing. Definitely, definitely. And uh, in your senior year, you were one of the leaders of the team. Uh, what did it feel like uh, to be in that leadership role? And did you learn anything from the past leaders that you had on Clarkson that have helped you that helped you for your leadership? in your senior year, because you were very lucky. You had two great captains your sophomore and junior year with Kaylee Mercer and Savannah Harmon. Yeah, they're, they're great leaders on and off the ice. And um, something that I really dialed in my junior and senior year was to be a role model on the ice and off the ice. But um, something that I, I, I really focused on was working my hardest in practice. Um, obviously, when you do that, that translates um, into games. So it leads up to what you're going to actually look like and play like in your games. So I think that was that was really important to make sure everyone dials in and practice and performs at their best so that they can be at their best when it comes game time. Definitely. And you won the ECAC tournament for the final time your senior year. Uh, what did that league championship mean to you since it was your final one? It meant a lot, obviously, winning that my, my senior year. Um, knowing that the season was uh, coming to an end um, soon, it was uh, truly amazing to experience that last ECAC championship with my teammates and, um, you know, to be able to, to have that trophy in our trophy case and everything like that was truly amazing. Now, in the tournament that year, you beat Boston College in overtime. Uh, talk about that game and what was it like to head to another Frozen Four uh, for your final time? That game was very stressful. Um, they were winning, I think, one nothing, and then Joe uh, tied it up to make it 1-1. And I was just, I think it was with five minutes left, she tied it up. And we were trying so hard. I think at that point we were trying too hard um, where things were, puck was fumbling off our sticks and things weren't going our way, but um, obviously made it out and, and, and got that, that W. Now you played your final collegiate game against Wisconsin your senior year. Uh, what was it, that game like for you, and what emotions were you feeling after playing your final college hockey game? That game was um, it was a great game, too. Um, I think we did lose 5-0. Um, but I think my team at that point like put everything on the line and played the best that we could and obviously didn't come out with the, the win, but we were proud of what we had accomplished throughout that season. And to be able to um experience in our fourth final final frozen four with um my class and as a team was amazing and um obviously after the game we were very upset and um just just very emotional that our our Clarkson career had come to an end um knowing that we wouldn't be back at Clarkson um and we wouldn't see each other on a regular basis either was very hard yeah, what was your favorite? What's been your favorite memory with Clarkson when you look back at your time in college hockey? Would definitely be the two national championships. Um, obviously, amazing moment, amazing memory, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, it'll just honestly always be a memory in my head. 
Now we have to talk about you winning the Patty Kazmaier Award in 2019. Uh, what was that like for yourself? What was your reaction to that, especially since you went against two really solid players in Annie Pankowski and Megan Keller? It was an amazing um, experience. Being compared to Patty and winning such a prestigious award was such an honor. And obviously, like you said, being um, a top three finalist with such amazing players with historic careers as well um, was something like I had obviously dreamed of, but never thought I'd be able to accomplish. So um, receiving that trophy was such a memorable moment that, um, you know, always always lays in my head and I always sometimes will think about it um, and look at Patty and just go, wow, like um, I accomplished that that year. And um, I couldn't thank my teammates and coaching staff and parents and support staff who have helped me along the way. And obviously at Clarkson, uh, my teammates who helped me get to that point and push me every day in practice and games and everything like that. Um, And to my coaches who developed me as a, a player, both on and off the ice. Now I have to ask, do you get to keep the trophy or do you have to give it back um, after like a year or something? They give you a replica. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Was it yeah. cool though to see Elizabeth Shagir win it the next year, having Clarkson go back to back with the Patty Cavs? I thought that was cool. Yeah, it was really awesome um, to see her win that. Um, I was really excited for her and happy for her. Um, and to obviously for Clarkson to go back to back was is great. So hopefully they can go three in a row for this yeah. year. Definitely, definitely. And another thing that you might not realize is you're the last Patty Kazmaier Award winner to receive it in person. Last year was virtual and they're going to do it virtual again this year. Does that do you do you think about that at all or not really? I thought that was interesting. (laughs) Honestly, not really. Um, But when I look back on it, having the ceremony and everyone there, it's a whole different atmosphere. And, um, you know, being able to be present and receiving that 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 award was was truly amazing. Now, I have to ask you about some of the teammates you got to play with. One of them was Ella Shelton. I feel like she does not get enough credit than she deserves. She's a fantastic hockey player, one of my favorites for in Clarkson history. What was it like being your teammate both on and off the ice? She's a great person, um, obviously, on the ice and off the ice. Um, she's a great player. <clears throat> Sorry, player. She has an amazing shot. She's very strong. Um, she also has a very vibrant, positive, um, energy. Um, she always can make you laugh whenever you, you need a laugh or a pick me up. Um, but yeah, you know, she just always tries her hardest and wants the best for not only her, but everyone else around her. Now, another great player in Clarkson history was Kaylee Mercer. What was it like being her teammate both on and off the ice and talk about the leadership she brought to your team, uh, that year you won the national championship. She's a, she was a, an amazing leader. Um, you know, she battled hard in practice, which obviously led her to having an amazing career at Clarkson. And, you know, I kind of followed in her footsteps with that whole practice, working hard thing and giving it your all when you can. Um, she's just an amazing person, both on and off the ice. She was very skilled um, and um, obviously a very um, great person to be around. And the last teammate I want to ask you about was Savannah Harmon. What was she like as a teammate, both on and off the ice? And talk about the leadership she brought, because I feel like she's a very underrated player in Clarkson history. Yeah, she's an amazing player, um, a great person, both on and off the ice. Um, She had a very deceiving shot from the point. Um, It was, I didn't know where it was going to go sometimes, but obviously most of the time it went in the back of the net. So um, it was really good for us. Um, she brought a lot of positive energy and, and was just that really great role model. Um, you know, she encouraged us to um, do our best and really wanted the best for everyone. Uh, we're now in the non-hockey segment of the podcast. We're asking some non-hockey questions. My first one is what music do you like to listen to? I know we talked a little bit about Justin Bieber. Is that all you listen to or do you have any other go-to artists? No, I listen to a lot of country as well. Um, I have Sirius XM, so that's literally my, the highway is what I play all the time. Um, you know, I like pop, I like rap, um, anything really I, I like. Who's your go-to country artist? I know Thomas Rhett, he has some good songs. I'm a big rap guy myself. I listen to a lot of Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Baby. I, know if, I don't know if you listen to that as well. Yeah, I do. Um, Probably my favorite country artist would, uh, there's a lot of them, but probably Luke Combs or Luke Bryan. Now, 
If you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Obviously, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Any question you would ask him, what would the first question be? Um, probably, what's it like to be such an amazing artist and what it feels like to be where you are today? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what he would say about like d- his childhood and how he dealt with all the hardships he dealt with. For now, sure. who was the funniest teammate you ever played with at Clarkson? Oh, <laughs> um, I would probably have to say Emma Keenan. Um, she was my roommate for my freshman and sophomore year. Um, but she always did like such funny stuff that would just make anyone laugh. Like it would probably, it could be like, um, so like dumb and out of the ordinary, but would make everyone laugh. And if you were feeling down, she'd make you laugh. And it was just, um, she's such an amazing person to be around. Now who had the best style at Clarkson besides yourself? (laughs) Um, I would have to say probably Mish. Um, I think she had some really good style. Now back to some hockey questions. My first one is what should be done to help grow women's hockey? I think promoting it more and um, getting the word out about um, obviously the PWHPA and obviously it kind of put a wrinkle in things this year with COVID, but um, you know, having those little girls looking up to us and always seeing them in the rink and stuff was truly amazing to know that they want to walk in our footsteps one day too. So we're not just doing this for us, but we're doing it for them as well. And to just, you know, promote it. And, and obviously it's amazing to see that NHL player, uh, NHL teams are coming on board, um, you know, to help us get to that point. Um, But I think just being able to get people to realize that women's hockey is good and um, can be a very uh, well-known sport if it does grow a lot bigger than it is now. But I think definitely the promotion part is the most important. Now, what's it going to be like to play at Madison Square Garden? I know I don't know if you're going to be participating in that or not, but was it how cool was that announcement to be playing at Madison Square Garden and to help grow women's hockey, especially since some of it's going to be televised on NBC? Yeah, so unfortunately, that's only for the U.S. teams, um, but that would have honestly been so cool considering that um, we would be like the first women's hockey team to play at that um, arena. Obviously, it's had a lot of historic events that have happened there and a lot of performers and, and, and obviously some great success on the ice. So I think, you know, just being in that atmosphere and being able to play uh, a game and being, having it televised would be such an amazing experience, especially right now. Are they going to do anything with the Canadian teams, like do something in Toronto or Ottawa, or you can't announce that right now or talk about it? Um, I don't know anything about that, but I mean, hopefully that would be pretty cool to um, play a game at the Scotiabank or um, in Ottawa or Montreal. Um, just depends on COVID and stuff, but I hope that happens in the future. Yeah, definitely. I think Montreal would be a really cool spot because I remember when the World Juniors were there like a few years ago and it was a really cool atmosphere, just all the people like basically nonstop noise. It was like crazy. So that would be cool to have a game, especially for the women's game to be in that atmosphere. Yeah, for sure. Now, what should I do better as an interviewer to improve and make this platform better? Honestly, I think you did a really good job today. Um, obviously, I, I have listened to a few college hockey podcasts and stuff, and they, they're really well done and um, really well put together. So great job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I can be one of the mainstream college hockey platforms one day. That's kind of my hope. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Now, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to any of your former teammates, friends, family members, or anyone else you know? Um, I would like to give a shout out to my classmates from Clarkson. Um, we were called the sex tuplets just because, you know, you can look up that, that definition, but it is like a class of six notes or something. Um, and so Cassie Vinkel, um, Josie Ann Pazavon, Emma Keenan, Ryan McGill, Kelly Mariani. Um, I miss you guys and wish we were back at Clarkson, but um, obviously hope to see you guys soon. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Lauren. I wish you all the best for the for your future. Uh, take care, stay safe, and you're one of my favorite players to watch in hockey, and I have so much respect for you, and you're such a great person as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Take care and talk to you later. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>